Coaches and referees, just a few reminders as we go into the first weekend of games. First, it's very important that we start on time. So referees, make sure you're there at the field. Make sure the field is set up properly. That the nets are in place properly, that you have proper soccer balls that are blown up. Uh, and let's get the game started on time. Coaches, this means that you need to stress to your teams to get there on time, to get a little warm up in so that we can start on time. If you are short a player or two, we will still start the game, okay? So make sure you stress to your parents to get there so we can keep our games on time. Nothing frustrates parents or coaches more uh, than having games get backed up due to being late early on uh, in the morning. Second thing that we wanna talk about is there won't be a coin toss before the game, all right? All we will do is the coaches will decide who's got which half. Obviously, that'll happen during the warm-up. The referee will give the ball to start with one of the teams at halftime. We will switch sides at halftime uh, on 77 and 99 fields. That way, that uh, the, the, if the wind's a factor, those types of things, that we factor that in. For the 4v4s and 5v5s, the coaches can determine before the game or at halftime if they want to switch sides. Most of our coaches prefer just to keep it on the same side. Don't make a big deal out of that. Let's just get the game going and the second half started once you guys have a conversation about that. The third thing is referees. We really don't want to be showing yellow cards or red cards unless we really have to, and I don't think we ever have. So if a player is a little bit out of control, if a player says something that they shouldn't, let's make sure that we just get them to their coach, tell them that they need to rest the rest of the half, depending on how long is left, or take a five minute break, but let's all do things that make sense, okay? We don't need to start showing cards, upsetting players too much, getting parents too much involved. Let's manage that between referees and coaches as best as possible. On restarts, okay, for 7v7, we will dribble in or pass in, okay? You notice I didn't say kick in. We don't want the balls going up in the air. They must be below the knees, okay? So referees, please make sure that the opposing team is at a two or three yard distance away from the sideline. And coaches, you should be the first ones to help out with that and make sure your team is fairly backed away from the sideline so the opposing team can make an intelligent decision on whether to pass the ball in or dribble the ball in. For 9v9s, we will be do, doing throw-ins, so make sure the ball is behind your head, feet are on the ground. Our referees will give some grace in the first couple of weeks, but then we will call fouls on those restarts, okay, if they're not throwing the ball in properly. On free kicks, all of our free kicks, except for penalty kicks, are indirect, okay? So any free kicks have to be passed to a teammate or touched to a teammate. We just don't want players drilling a ball into a wall and hitting someone in the face. And we also want a little bit more thought to our restarts than just lining up and shooting it. So if they can put their hand on it, find a quick pass while the other team is still trying to get ready, that's intelligent, smart problem solving that we encourage uh, and good leadership from the players. So those are the things that we're about, okay? So on those restarts, make sure that you understand that it's all indirect unless it's a penalty kick. The restraining lines, there's some videos on our coach page that go over the restraining lines. The purpose of the restraining lines is to play out of the back, okay? It also serves as our offside line as well. We are not gonna put permanent lines on the field. We'll use some flat orange discs to represent the restraining line and the offside line. Again, if you have any questions on the concept of why we have the restraining line, encouraging our players to play out of the back, you can check out the video on the coach page as well as the offside rule as well so you're educated on that. Referees, if it's close and it's a close call between being offside or not offside, go ahead and let the attacking team have the advantage. Coaches, just know if it's a close call, we're gonna give the advantage to the attacking team so we can see them finish a chance and just err on the side of the attacking team in that regard, okay? As far as where parents sit, general rule, none of the parents should be behind the end line or near the goal, okay? We will have one 77 field and maybe a 5v5 field that will occasionally have players that will sit on the end lines, but for the most part, we should have players and coaches on the coaching sideline and parents on the opposite parent sideline, okay? Please help us out with that. Referees, it'll ultimately be up to you to move those parents that are standing near the goal or sitting behind the end line when they don't need to be. If there is an open parent sideline, get them there. If there's not an open parent sideline, get them as close to the corner flags as possible and away from the goal. Okay. In regards to subbing, 
we will sub on pretty much everything that's a restart, okay? So whether it's a corner kick, a goal kick, a kick in from the sideline, or a throw in for the 99s, either team can sub. What we don't want, and what we talked about in the coaches meeting, is the flow of the game to constantly be stopped, okay? So try to sub two or three times a half, unless there's an injury and other you know, moments that happen. But overall, let's not be chopping and changing, and, and otherwise we will give the refer referees the right to say, hey, no, you can't sub right now. You've just subbed. You can only sub on your throw in or on your goal kicks, and we don't want to do that. So help us keep the flow of the game going at 77 and 99. Um, obviously at 5v5 and 4v4 it's just subbing on the fly, 77 and 99, just make sure you get the referee's attention um, and you can bring that player on as the player's coming off. The final point is after the game, let's make sure that players are showing great sportsmanship. Okay, so make sure you get them in the line to shake hands. When they're shaking hands, let's do it properly. If you catch a player trying to be funny or be too silly or just be a bad sport and not shaking the other team's hand or ignoring a high five, that's your teaching moment to pull a player aside and correct them, that you can do that in, the, in front of the entire team if you need to, to make sure you're making a point that it's just not acceptable, that they need to have great character no matter what. As they say, you show some of your character when you win, you show all your character when you lose. So let's make sure either way there that they are finishing the game in a proper fashion, that you make sure that you're shaking the referee's hands, getting the game card signed so we can move on and have plenty of time to start the next game. Thanks, it should be a great weekend.